So this is 12 ton trailer. 12 ton trailer, yep. Single ram. Single ram, yep. Air brakes. Air brakes. Welcome back to the channel and today um, we're here at, at Richard Weston with Angus who's the Managing Director um, Hi Ollie and, hi, uh, and uh, we're here to, do, to have a look at some of the trailers and how they're made and um, we're also looking at maybe the, the next or the upgraded 12 ton model which we've got on the farm at home Yeah and we'll show you some other products while you're here, we'll show you some spreaders and, and possibly some flat trailers as well. So yeah, we'll come on in and have a look around. Brilliant, thanks. Trailers. So on every product, every product has a product code and this product is welded to the trailer. So here, this is a 0157. Every year we change the letter, which happens to be uh, up here on zero this year. And then we have the 157. So if we ever have a problem and we need to get dialed back to find out any parts or anything, we just need this number and we know all the parts so it, it was, this is kept on the computer and it's kept with all the history of what parts we fitted so all the axles, the steel, everything goes right back but also it all, this is welded to the trailer and if the trailer is ever uh, lost or stolen this number is used to, as an identification to regain the trailer and it's been very successful in capturing uh, many trailers back that have been um, borrowed, shall we say, by uh, some people and, and, and been able to be reclaimed once the farmer has uh, found that trailer. Uh, and we had a case just, just the other week in Norfolk where, where a customer was able to regain his trailer after several years without it by using these numbers. Okay, so what we're looking at here is our, our steel. This is, this, is, this is what we buy to make all the materials out of. And we buy a coil of steel. So we buy the width and the thickness and the grey, and we buy a complete coil. So coil is about 28 tonnes of material. And all this material you see here is made in Tartar steel, which is made in, in Wales, South Wales. You can see that, Tartar steel uh, and, and Richard Weston, and, that, and that's been made for us. So we've ordered that, and we're, we're ordering six months in advance for our material to get our material through. And there's a lot of people who've got shortage of material at the moment, but we, we because of our relationship with Tata, and we're very stable, we've been having that relationship for many years, we managed to keep, we, we were able to keep good supply throughout this period. Okay, so we're laser profiling material, and you can see here we've got a, a tailboard and a front seat and some side posts being profiled out. And you can see the laser profiling operating here in action and this is a piece of filing piece of four mil plate and this is an 18 tonner sub assembly front to back and side post that's a tailboard extension for a silage kit tailboard extension tailboard extension for a silage kit so these are these are trailer sides uh, and we've got a, a these are 16 tonne size, these are 18 tonne size, these are 14 tonne size. So they're all the different sides when you go to the shop floor. And they've all got a, a little slot in here. And this is where we set up our, our posts. So we do a, a slot and tab situation for the post. And these are the top rails for the trailers down there. So we go around the corner. We're just laying out a, a side sheet ready for, for making another side sheet. So we'll have the, the post go on the and we use a little tab and they go into the little hole so everything goes into the right place. So we lift the floor onto the, onto the jig here and then we drop the two sides in either side and we put the front on and then we fully weld that up on the outside of the, of the thing. And that, that's how we end up with a body, a trailer body. body just pushed out of the jig and now it's got to be go to the next door to be fully welded on the inside so we've got no welds on the inside we've just got some stitching a trailer beam in production fully welded together it's welded together on a submerged dark welder so that's the 
that's a, a, a well from the submerged bar. Well so here we have a, a chassis jig and we've got the two beams that are welded here. Uh, and then we've got cross members which have been put together on a, a robotic welder both ways. So all the welds are done on the flat. And we're just setting up here with the um, spring hangers at the moment before it goes through the welding process. Body's coming through here, which we fully weld the insides in this area and fit the tailboards too. They should have the chassis on, but we've got a, a delay on some components which are now in, so we've now got to push to get the chassis caught up with the bodies, which is what we're working on today. Once they're finished in here, we sign them off in fabrication, we do the final inspection, uh, and then they're signed over to the finishing area. Well, the seam on the inside of the trailer on the middle of the floor where the two floor plates come together and where the floor joins the side of the pulley seam weld here. So again, for you Ollie, this will stop your, your muck getting in between any bits of steel that's been causing you rot later in life on the body. And this is what's so important about protecting our steel because it's a, it's a resource that's not fully valued and by fully welding it, we'll keep that resource for a number of years. So you won't have to buy a trailer again, hopefully, for another 20 years. In here we assemble the tailboards. So all the tailboards go on a jig and fixture, again rotating backwards and forwards. So the assembly is always the same. And then we've got a tailboard going onto the back of this fixture, which is like the back of a trailer, where we put the two arms on. What this means is, if you ever need a spare tailboard, they're all the same. So for us, we can just pick one tailboard up and supply it. Unfortunately, how it happens in the field, I don't know, but there is always someone who writes the tailboard off every harvest. So here we are, we've got, we're in rotor assembly area for the much spreaders. All these are made in Sheffield, and they're made out of boron steel, and they're a pressed component, very, very strong, very, very rigid. So yeah, that, and that's the parts that go on the much spreaders. We've got two different sizes here. We've got the mid size, and we've got the larger diameter size over there. And this is the assembly we end up with over here. So a nice, nice strong, you can see a large diameter tube, which gives it rigidity, complete with the uh, boron flight. Okay, we're taking a, a completed fabrication from the fabrication shop to a, a finished item in this shop. So during here, we're, we're going to look at the shop lasting process, the painting process, and then the final assembly process. So while we're here, we'll just have a look at a completed much better assembly. So this is, again, ready to go through to paint. And that's what it looks like. Again, once you've got the teeth on here, you've got a very small area for material to pass through. So it's got a high shredding capacity for the manure. And that's what they look like once, once they've had the shop blaster painted and all assembled, ready to go on the back of the much better. So in, in this room here, it, it's, everything is shot blasted. So what we're doing is we're taking a hose, we're dropping grit into the, into the airline and blasting the material. We'll just walk up and have a look at this. What we end up with is an absolutely dead clean surface, but also a surface which looks like that under a microscope. So it's about a 40 micron dent in the material. And what we're looking for is paint surface area. So by putting lots of little dents in it, you're giving your paint a lot of area chances to stick to something. So everything's painted in these three booths here. So these are spray bakes. So we put a, we, we take it up to temperature up to 30 Celsius. Everything's held at 30 Celsius. It doesn't matter if it, whatever time of year it is. Um, and the paint is heated to a, to a fixed thing. So we're dealing with constant temperature and uh, of paint and everything else. Uh, and this is where we apply the primer. Uh, and then we put a bake process on and then we apply a top coat which is also a bake process and both of these are two pack paints so we get a nice solid fixture once they're painted uh, we can work on it almost straight away so this trailer would have been probably painted this morning and literally we're starting fitting straight away so the paint is is a chemical reaction so it's solid ready to be worked on it's not like something needs to several weeks before it's fully dried. Some of the detail, we uh, don't paint where the wheel rim sits onto the hub because obviously that, when you ever take a wheel off, you never get any, um, any paint there, it's bare metal. And, and so to stop wheels getting loose initially when, when the trailer is applied, we protect that area from when we're painting it. So this is 
12 ton trailer. 12 ton trailer, yep. Single ram. Single ram, yep. Air brakes. Air brakes. And it's, I guess, the upgraded version or the modern day version of mine, like you said. It is exactly, yeah, the modern day version of what you what you had, Ollie. Uh, the, the, the size is, is the length and the depth is the same. Um, and it's just, you know, since the 96, there's been, you can see the different changes that's happened in the, of, of, of where we've gone with the trailers over those years. So we, we, we're always looking for feedback from our customers and our users and, and putting those into, into the design. And the, the product has evolved to, to where it is from what you had and, and to where it is today. Okay, so here we are at Bridge Westerns in the stockyard. We've got this trailer here, which is one of a pair getting ready for Japan, which will be loaded, boxed up next week. And this has got a complete uh, lift off silage kit. So you just, you can see there's two little tine holes at the top. You can pick a whole lot off in one go and it's just held on with ratchet straps. And then we'll come over here and we're just talking about wheels earlier and the impact on soil conditions. So this is an 18 tonne trailer. This trailer is on a nice big set of Michelins. It's on 650, 55, 26.5s. So it's a real big tire. And then we've got a tire here, which is the 560, 60, 22.5. And I, I don't know if you can get the, get the standing back and the difference in the, in the two, two wheels and what the impact is on, the, on, the, on your soil in that respect. Yeah, because I've got we were speaking earlier the super singles on my 12 tonner yeah and it's in the winter a lot of people have been commenting everyone's been saying it, it does compact in a bit which it does it will do yeah and yeah i mean the next time around it'd be nice to look at something with some wider wheels yeah so yeah. the wider wheels on a on a 12 tonner now would be would, would be that 560 560 which also suits a 14 tonner very well and then when you go to the 18 tonner you really need to look at Probably the bigger, bigger set of wheels. Uh, a, a, a 560 on an 18 tonner is like having a super single on a 12 tonner. So it, right. it's, you know, it, but there, but there is a big cost implication to these big wheels. But much easier to tow, larger diameter, easier rolling, um, and less soil compaction. Yeah. And, and the guys who have been taking these on um, beat um, harvesting contract trailers have gotten with them really well, and, and we've had really good feedback from those clients. Notice the difference. Notice the difference yeah. and, and you know where they would have got stuck in previous years are just able to keep rolling with a with a large diameter wheel. Yeah. 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 I'll grab a bit of V roll on the on the little ones. Well I, I say the little for me well, they're, they're, for, they're, for me they're, they're the same one over there ah, in, in the sunshine. For, for me they're they're quite big. You know, know, know. <laughs> you might miss that whole it's up to you. Really. Yeah, yeah, I think I have, yeah, because I've been uh, farming with the super singles for so long. So they're the, the, uh, the flotations, which I guess would be more standard on trainers today. And I've been used to the, the super singles for so long, I've forgotten what the, what the flotations are like. So yeah, that would be nice, set flotations. wanted to ask you Angus was on my 12 tonner at home yeah it's got the twin rams yes and I noticed on the 12 tonner in there you've gone to single ram yeah we've, we've gone to single ram and uh, there was a number of factors why we chose to go to a single ram from from the twin ram one of them was re reliability so the, the twin rams are a piston ram which is quite an old design way of, of doing it a very cheap way of manufacturing a, a, a ram but the, but the reliability is quite poor. And we moved to a displacement cylinder uh, and that is a much more reliable and it's a higher duty cycle ram. So it's what you'd find on a, on a, a tipping truck. Um, you wouldn't find a piston cylinder in, in a road haulage situation or people who are doing a high duty cycle. But, and then we went to a single ram is because when you've got, when you, when you got oil pressure, pressuring 
two rams, the oil will always go to the easiest place. So occasionally you'll find a load will get let go on one half side of a truck, especially if they've been loaded by a tip tow bucket where they're, they're tipping into one side and maybe compacting one side, especially in the compost sector or the muck sector. And you might find one load would, would let go from one side. And then you find the oil for that tipping into a twin ram trailer would always go to the easiest place. So you'll start to actually trying to push the trailer over. Um, and so it was a safety feature uh, and also a, uh, a reliability feature and they were the main reasons that drove us to go down that right. There was also the speed of tipping. So when you've got oil going through a number of uh, pathways to get to it, it slows down. So every time something goes around a corner, be it fluid or whatever, it's slowing the oil down. And we use a three quarter tip hose from the tractor all the way to the, to the ram and it's only got one place to go and we find that the, the, the trailer has a quicker cycle time from going up to down um, and, and that's important too when you're doing silage or if you're doing a um, sugar beet contract you really want it, it's all about the speed of tipping and, and, and getting the, um, the trailer back to beside the harvester to get the next load moved and if you, if you can save yourself a load or, 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 or a trailer on an operation then it really starts to add up for people. So here we are, we're just looking at a muck spreader here. Um, and what's interesting on this spreader is we've got some hydraulic floor tensioning. So rather than using a spanner to, to push the floor up, we use a, a little hydraulic pump, hand pumped, and it's got a um, little gas chamber here to keep the pressure on the, on the rams. And you just pump it up to about, here we are, uh, so PSI uh, or bar, we'll go with bar, that's about 80 bar. So it keeps the pressure on the floor chains so as the chains wear a little bit, rather than having to get a spanner out, you just pump up your hydraulics. So yeah, just looking at the back of this spreader, you can see how you've got the, the overlap of your rotors. And the, 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 the overlap gives the material uh, not much area to pass through. It's got to go through the rotor. So you get a high smash up of material, breaking the material up, and then it becomes very uh, easy to be pulled back into your land. We also see that the, the, the blades are not in line, so they're curved, so that you're not getting all your blades coming around as one point and impacting continuously. You've got an on, you've got a more, uh, what can I say, continuous load on the rotors. And then we're on the floor chain, you've got one big floor stack going across, and then we've got a seven-two floor sprocket. So you're spreading your wear over, and you're getting a lot more wrap around the chain and we've got the slats very closely spaced so there are only five chain links spacing. It's a very nice muck spreader Angus. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day but focus on a, on a trailer for now. So yeah we, we've got some flatbed bed trailers, we manufacture flatbed trailers very similar in a way to the Suffolk trailers so we use uh, a floor piece and a full length of the trailer, no welds across it helps to keep it very flat so rather every time you weld a plate you're, you're more likely to pull and then it has the big u-channels underneath it which we mount the axles directly to uh, fully welded down the seam fully welded all the way around um, and trying to remove any areas where we can get ingress of material into the trailer uh, nice big heavy sections for the ladders gives it plenty of strength headboard and again using the same sprung drawbar as, as on the side best to have a look underneath it Ollie at all that. Yeah. So under underside you can see a full depth U-channel, the uh, bearers they go right through so the, the, the bearers, are sh the U-channels are shaped for the bearers to pass right underneath the trailer and then you can see just under here we've got a little hook, you can hook your ratchet strap under there, when you go around to the other side it hasn't fallen off which is, yeah. but this one has got the addition of some rope hooks as well. Yeah. Well um, it's, I hope you guys have enjoyed coming around today to Richard Weston and um, thanks so much Angus for letting us come around. And it's an absolute pleasure Ollie. Uh, 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 we run an open poli open door policy here so you know if you're, if you're a Richard Weston client or if you're thinking about changing your trailer you know people just rock up and we, and we, we have an open door policy. We've got nothing to hide uh, and we're proud of what we do and, and we really enjoy showing people our products and, and getting them into you know uh, and finding people who, who, who take as much care and pride about what we do and, and, and value what we do and that, that's the key thing, finding clients who value what we do.
has been great and hopefully in the future we'll have a look at uh, the, the next model up from our trailer. Oh that would and, be fantastic. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about the ejector trailer potentially having a having a, a demo try out of that over the biomass business. Yeah we, we, we can, we can, we can uh, help you with some product to run more, more of your uh, videos.